Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you may be. There is something that I would like to discuss that is not so often addressed, but it is realized by many. We are living in an age that some would consider to be the end times, the last days. And I think to myself, what is giving people that indication? Now, let's pretend for a moment that there is no written prophecy of what's to come. No Bible, no ancient text, nothing. No warnings about our future. Do you believe that people would still have this doomsday is coming outlook on life? Or do you think people would be more intuitive? That they would be able to sense something is coming? If you've been around the past 30, 40 plus years, then you've seen some dramatic changes in technology, government, and in nature, and all three of these things can affect one another. New technologies that can affect nature are usually governed under policies, laws. Nature on its own can cause governments to conjure up new technologies. If you see changes in one of these, you should see changes in the others. So what I want to do is take a look at the world around us to see what's changing now and how those changes are affecting or are going to affect everything else. After all, most of us live in subjection of those three things. It is very difficult for us to control the changes in government, technology, or nature. However, we do have power. We can adapt, influence, put good people in the right positions. It is just when something sudden occurs in one place, we have to ask ourselves, what caused that change? And what did that change affect? And this is the time we should take a step back and look at the whole world for what we see may be a revelation. Okay, so let's start here. June 2018 going into November. At this time, the California wildfires were roaring. So there was a lot of news coverage on this, as well as coverage on U.S. border issues. Prior to that, we got hit with some extremely bad weather, earthquakes, and a catastrophic volcanic event, Hawaii. Things for the year tend to rev up going into October for some strange reason and then begin to taper down going into December until next year. So what I am talking about here are cosmic rays. But let's go back earlier this year when this was published by NASA. Cosmic rays hitting Earth are bad and getting worse. Now that is a pretty big statement to make, and this article goes on to state how Professor Nathan Schwardron of the University of New Hampshire had taken data from the Cosmic Ray Telescope for the effects radiation called Crater on board NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and discovered that the cosmic radiation levels in the Earth-Moon system were at an all-time high and, quote, were peaking at levels never before seen in the space age. Now, the article does explain how this all works, very simply put. And they even throw in how this affects us here on Earth by stating, how does this affect us? Cosmic rays penetrate commercial airlines, dosing passengers and flight crews so much that pilots are classified by the International Commission on Radiological Protection as occupational radiation workers. Some research shows that cosmic rays can seed clouds and trigger lightning, potentially altering weather and climate. Furthermore, there are studies, number one, two, three, and four, linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias in the general population. And there are numbered links that I will leave in the description box for you. So, because our sun is at its solar minimum, its magnetic field is weak, and so more exotic cosmic particles can enter our solar system. 
At the sun's solar maximum, we see a lot of activity, a strong magnetic field. This helps shield us from the invading particles or waves of energy. What the sun does is, at its solar maximum, it produces a heavy amount of sunspots. These are areas of reduced surface temperature on the sun's photosphere, so they appear darker and they are formed by a concentration of magnetic energy in areas of the sun. Now these sunspots can erupt waves of energy particles in the form of coronal mass ejections, solar flares. If the sunspot is near the central meridian of the sun aimed at us, then those mass ejections of particles can wreak havoc upon the earth. A solar wind is a mass of energy particles that constantly stream off the sun and the solar wind strength, speed, and type of particles it carries varies. And it varies as the sun goes from solar maximum to solar minimum. That energy coming off of the sun would be a great threat if it wasn't for our magnetosphere. But those solar winds as they reach the edge of our solar system deflect incoming cosmic particles due to the strong magnetic forces of the particles in those winds. So because the sun is in its solar minimum phase, we may experience more high latitude blocking. See during the winter season the cold air regions such as Greenland and Canada develop these cold air masses which can move southward into northeast United States and can get stuck there due to a block in the Earth's atmosphere, which is the effect of a consistent high pressure system in northern latitude regions. This also contributes to us going into a predicted El Nino weather pattern this winter. Now what we can see collectively from all this is a shaking up of things. So there is a greater interest in it. There is a reason there is a great interest these days in the study of Mars, space, particle physics. There is a need for knowledge in these areas. The sun is a very good indicator and detector of what is going on out there in interstellar space because of its proximity and size in the galaxy. It can easily influence other celestial bodies and it can be easily influenced by other large celestial bodies. Look at it this way. The earth and every other planet in our solar system, including the sun, are all moving together at the same time within the Milky Way galaxy. The galaxy is moving along with every other galaxy and star systems at the same time. And as they move throughout the universe, these systems are putting out energy. And those waves, those particles, really have nothing to stop them. They just don't fade out into the distance. They keep going, steered by gravitational forces. And they don't stop until they collide. These particles travel at the speed of light. So if you have anything in outer space that can produce light and you are just now able to see the light emissions, you can believe that energy is coming in with the light. The neutrinos, the X-rays, the gamma rays, along with other exotic particles. And because the sun is at its solar minimum, it isn't shielding us as it should against these particles. We are very vulnerable at this moment in time. And it is important that we all understand this because according to the model predictions, we have until about 2020 until the sun starts to come up out of its low activity state. So as we move throughout the galaxy with minimum protection, we move into a different part of space where there are different objects. And these objects don't have to be close. People think that something has to be planet X close to have any effect on us, no. All those stars you see in the sky at night, if any one of those blew up for some reason, we're going to have a big problem. And something like Planet X is nowhere near the distance of any of those stars. Hey listen, we have to be cautious of the land we live on. We also have to be cautious of certain plants, animals, and people. We have to be careful as we travel our planet because some places are dangerous. And we often have to survive catastrophic storms, earthquakes, and we should also, because of space, because we live in it, with a whole lot of other stuff out there, yes, we should be paying attention to that as well. Folks, this is not make-believe stuff, and I get it. 
It is easy to forget about something you can't see, or really feel for that matter. But people are beginning to feel it. And soon, people will begin to see it affect their lifestyles. You do know that we are very close to the point where we won't be able to fly, meaning planes will be grounded if this influx of radiation continues to trend. For one, it may be too windy to take off, or the radiation levels may be too high to fly. And the Earth, at this stage, will be creating hell storms. So by now, I'm sure everyone may be aware that CERN is shutting down the Large Hadron Collider for the next two years, labeled Long Shutdown 2, but not before this happened. The idea here is, if by chance you were able to detect a particle from another dimension, I know, stay with me here, if you were to detect such a particle, then it would have a mass twice that of a normal atom in our world. So they were looking at the data and noticed some abnormal variations, some bumps, which indicates that yes, something is there, but nothing is there. And so we have the name ghost particle or whatever they're calling it these days. They are finding a lot of particles that aren't there, right? Or are they there, but not here in a sense? So did they get what they needed and decided to move on to the next stage? Because CERN isn't shutting down, only one of their machines is. Really so that they can further modify it. But they have other machines. And there are other particle colliders around the world. And more on the way. CERN is just the one we are distracted by. Go ahead, name five more particle accelerators around the world off the top of your head. Can you do it? We also have to consider, folks, that with this influx of cosmic particles, scientists have to take that into account when they are running those machines. And I could see how that could keep you from running the LHC without interference from foreign particles raining down to Earth. None of these things you have control over. Your only defense here is your healing ability and God. Or you can go 250 feet underground and hang out there for a little while. Purple skies are here. That's not normal. And it's not strange. That's radiation doing that. I'm the worst one to knock anyone's conspiracy theory, but we get too caught up with the threat of man. Some think that the government is behind everything. No, sometimes they have to deal with the same things we have to deal with. And this is one of those times. Thanos is out there. And he's coming with all six stones and a fresh gauntlet. What would you do? What do you think the government would do, or are doing? Do you think they would sit there like ducks in a pond? Should you? Shouldn't you be working towards optimizing your health? Shouldn't you be working on ways to move yourself into a location and home that has more solidity and resources? Shouldn't you be working towards improving your attitude towards other people? I feel more and more of us are going to have to keep our aggressions in check as these Earth changes can drive people into sudden manic rages. You think I'm kidding? Watch. I'm consistently discussing energy, particles, frequencies, beating this stuff into your head. We need to know this stuff. Or maybe that is just me. Maybe I just need to know this stuff. Maybe I should not take my time and energy to reemphasize something as concepts on the law of attraction. Because some people are just having a hard time getting it. It is beyond them. Maybe they need not understand it. Maybe they don't want to understand it. And maybe that is why things like Planet X and Cosmic Rays scare people away. They just don't understand. And you always fear what you don't understand. <laughs>